Hello, Libra. Welcome to your reading for October 21st to the end of the month. This is for Libra and Libra Rising and Libra Moon. And we're going to jump right into it, Libra. This is definitely going to be, uh, listen, there's a lot of major aspects and a lot of them are actually really great. If you're here for money, I, this is big for money, for work, a lot of stuff happening here. Okay, love. There's there's a lot of, uh, you know, breakthrough energy, progress energy, seal the deal energy around this time. Now, you may still be feeling the impact of that full moon in Aries from last week. Uh, we're And Sun Square Mars, remember I talked about that last week. You're going to feel it for these next two weeks as well. And we're definitely getting closer to that Mars-Pluto opposition, which you will likely be feeling around this time as well. So they're kind of like the undercurrents. Um, you see that there's mostly water energy a lot of emotions a lot of earth energy as well but we a will be getting a lot more fire air next month so those you know obviously blend well with you uh but we do have venus and sagittarius for these two weeks okay so that's really uh fun fun loving really 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 nice all right i talked about it last week now uh monday october 21st let's kick it off let's break it down we've got mercury trining saturn so Amazing day. What an amazing way to kick off the next two weeks. Mercury, the messenger, the planet of communication, writing, commerce, learning new things, and this great harmonious aspect with the planet of long-term stability, authority, structure. So this is a great day to make deals, agreements, build bridges, have important conversations. Uh, you may even sign contracts here. The, this is great. Okay. Perfect for signing contracts. You could also be receiving messages around this time regarding long-term goals, especially with like relationships, finances, but also work. Remember Saturn is in Pisces in your sixth house of everyday activities which includes work okay uh even health matters could be something here as well health fitness wellness pets are part of the sixth house as well um but there is a lot of focus here on your future okay we're talking about saturn remember that long-term potential energy here a lot of depth with these two water signs very much removing day uh, as well as, um, you know, this could be a really big day just thinking about your, like checking in on your future, maybe even like reality checking. Mercury is also intellect as well. Uh, so there could be something here truly like work related, something money related. Remember, Mercury is in Scorpio, right? Your second house, income, finances, salary, money. All right. It's also self worth, self value. So, just think around this time, this could actually be pretty life changing because it is coming after Venus trying Saturn. It is coming after Mercury trying Jupiter. There's a lot of aspects that's been part of this story. There's a story being told in your life. So continue to be the author of your story. All right. Take advantage of this aspect. Now, Tuesday, October 22nd, uh, we're going to start with Sun squaring Pluto. Now, Sun is still in your sign. All right. So happy birthday for any Libras as born, you know, the day before and this day as well. Uh, sun is still in your sign, squaring Pluto and Capricorn. And so you see Sun is moving into Scorpio. Therefore, the sun in your sign, late degree, 29 degrees with Pluto and Capricorn. So this is that critical degree. Okay, so it's an anoretic degree. This is what we call it. Just strong energy. All right. Remember, Pluto did go direct. Pluto, power, empowerment. You may feel that energy here. Now, what's happening? This is something that we call a T-square, where you've got Mars in Cancer. You've got Pluto in Capricorn. you got the sun in your sign. All cardinal energy that's really activated around this time and we are approaching mars pluto opposite uh each other as well as the fact that the sun is squaring mars so this could be a little bit of a day where a little bit of power struggles do come up especially uh regarding family as a possibility here or career for y'all all right um and i'm saying that because pluto and capricorn your fourth house your domestic sector significant other family children uh you know realtors even if you're thinking about moving if there's something that has to do with home landlords possibly as well mars and cancer your 10th house of career public recognition as well fame as well whatever you're exerting your energy into that you want to be known for so I mean, Mars and Pluto are just really in the picture here. And they are kind of acting like the, you know, villains of like an 80s teen rom-com. You know, like the chip 
Chips and the Chads and the Chets or whatever with their collars flipped up. Remember, draining energy, <laughs> draining energy, but power struggling, right? This is power trip and they could be Mars and Pluto can bring that up maybe with authority figures here as well. Just again, like I said last week, don't let anyone steal your power. Use this energy, harness this energy for you, for your breakthrough for your empowerment, all right? So the sun square Pluto just uh, can have something to do with relationships, partnerships. Again, home matters for you. Remember, the sun is in your sign as, as well. Something here with legal matters too, maybe contracts. Uh, just general harmony, sun in your sign. I mean, finding balance in your life. Pluto is also, uh, remember, Pluto's transformation. Pluto is death and rebirth. Pluto is destruction. Pluto is in Capricorn, structures and systems. So a lot of y'all may be, you know, breaking down walls uh, to, you know, that may things that may not be working for you. Okay. So just keep that in mind and remember the South Node is in your sign. So even just following that full moon in Aries where you could have had some changes in relationships, partnerships, endings of some as well, uh, with the fact that that's your opposite sign. So uh, there's a lot of exiting around this time. So with that said, have the outcome that you want. Okay. Remember empowerment. Pluto is empowerment. Cur everything is a, is a choice, right? Courage is a choice. So choose it. Have the outcome that you deserve. And remember squares, you know, they can be challenging, but they release this great deal of energy as well. Now you see the sun is moving into Scorpio that same day and even with all this water energy that we've been feeling you're still going to be a, a feeling a big shift all right on this day libra nation for the next four weeks you could be going really deep a lot of focus on not only money remember second house money finances salary but also self-worth and self-value the value that you bring to things uh things that you value assets as well material possessions but sun in scorpio is you know there's that depth to it so seeking your higher truths and any of the things i just mentioned exploring really exploring there is a depth here I, I gotta know i gotta know i gotta see how this works i gotta you know personal transformation really is the name of the game all right so keep that in mind that's uh you see it's a big dramatic entrance into scorpio season with the sun square pluto which can be testing so make time for yourself okay Remember, I said you create your reality, all right? So create the reality that you want, the one that you deserve. This could be a big, profound moment for you. Just really go deep, okay? Really go deep. Maybe even doing like shadow work around this time, especially with Pluto very, uh, being very active and the fact that it is Scorpio season now uh, because it's like the underworld, right? Now, Thursday, October 24th, Mars sextile Uranus. Absolutely amazing. This is one for the books. All right. So I really, really absolutely love this. One of the best aspects of the month. And you can see all the blue asterisks indicating the best aspects. Okay. So um, really love this. There's no boredom here. There's no border. This is breakthrough energy. We're talking about Uranus. The, so breakthroughs. So you see the theme so far up until this point. Breaking down walls, death and rebirth, breakthroughs, transformation, right? So Uranus is the great awakener. All right. So there could be something surprising, something unexpected here, a big breakthrough here in finances. Uh, this is your eighth house. So this is definitely going to be the next few days. These days, just these days are going to be very, very powerful. There is that depth. I talked about Pluto. Pluto is the ruler of Scorpio. We're in Scorpio season. You've got this aspect here in Taurus that rules your eighth house. Pluto, Scorpio is the native ruler of the eighth house. You see all of that overlap. You're going deep in terms of love, in terms of relationships, in terms of your transformation, in terms of even business partners, shared resources, investments, inheritance, bonuses, commissions, uh, paying off debts, loans, royalties, joint bank accounts, all of that, all of that here. Okay. So you could have just really great surprising moments with, with Uranus in this very auspicious aspect. Mars, don't forget action, passion, drive. And sure he's in cancer. And remember Mars in cancer is like uh, 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 feisty at this point, right? Feisty, impatient, but this is a sextile. 
And so it's almost like one of those superhero movies where the superhero is like under this like dark spell. But then Uranus is the girlfriend or the boyfriend or, you know, the husband or the best friend, whatever it is. It's like Mars, Mars, snap out of it. You know me. Come back to me. Break the spell. Well, he does. Mars does. OK, he takes action. He snaps out of it. The spell is broken. He brings the breakthrough. OK, that you want that surprise, that progress. And it could have to do with something with career, too, because Mars and Cancer in your 10th has a career or fame or how you want to be recognized, some sort of honors, achievements, even like leadership energy. A uh, big window of opportunity. So remember, Mars is action. Take action. There's a lot of potential here. A lot of potential. So uh, and it is a strong aspect that you see carries over to the next week, Monday, October 28th, where Mars is now trining Neptune. Mwah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chef's kiss. Chef's kiss. This is uh, Mars trining Neptune. Absolutely amazing. And one of the reasons why is because I've talked about this before. Mars and Neptune are so dissimilar. They have absolutely nothing in common. So when they actually get along in a trine, which is highly auspicious, highly favorable, makes life effortless for you, this is great. This is cranking up your spirituality, okay? Emotionally moving. Remember, well, uh, you know, both the Romans and the Greeks, by the way, identified, uh, you know, Neptune, associated Neptune with the sea, right? Emotions, depth. All right. Even imagination. We're talking about Neptune here. Compassion, kindness, selflessness, uh, empathy. All of that goes a long way. You're going to feel those vibrations. This is also strong, creative, artistic energy, uh, intuition, just completely heightened. Uh, really love this. I absolutely love this for you. Again, likely something here with uh with work okay maybe even thinking about your dream job and or you know uh seeing you know glimmers of that happening in your life um because this is activating your house of career and your house of work and when i say work more like your duties your sense of responsibilities but also you know colleagues things like that work environment so really big i mean a, pay attention to your dreams. Neptune is dreams, right? They could be sending you messages, and it's very active. But also, dream big. Dream big around this time. I mean, this is a really great aspect. Now, okay, now, uh, same day, Venus is going to square Saturn. So remember, Venus is in Sagittarius, and that rules your third house. Communication. Uh, thinking, processing, uh, all of that. Siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins. That could be like really highlighted with Venus and Sagittarius for you and short distance travel. Now, Venus square Saturn. At this point, Saturn has grown a mustache. He's put on the aviators and he is not in the mood to let you have fun. Okay? That's just how Saturn is with this aspect. It's almost like, hey, I finished work early. Going to go meet up with the girls or my squad or other colleagues. Saturn calls you. He calls you. He says, no, 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 not today. Not today. You got a lot. You, you, here's more work. Here's more work. Okay. So remember, you got to work with Saturn's energies. Okay. Work with his energies. And it. he is a taskmaster of the planet of responsibility, authority, ultimately rewards you. Remember, Saturn makes you work hard to reap those rewards and Saturn's karma. So again, at this point, just, you know, work, uh, like explore the energies that you may feel this day. Don't fight it. Don't let Saturn ruin your fun. Okay, so do the work. Um, then go to you know the cheesecake factory, whatever it is. Go to the pool. You know, uh, watch the dolphins. Whatever you you know, have that fun after. But you know, Saturn just may require something around you, uh, from you around this time. All right, with and especially so because Venus is your ruling planet. So. Just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Okay. Now, the other thing is um, Mercury will be opposite Uranus on October 30th, and that's Wednesday now. So this is a day where uh, you possibly... Okay. So this is a day where when I talk about finances, something here. Okay. Don't launch anything. Don't make any agreements. This is a big day of be mindful of what you say when Mercury is opposing Uranus. Both of these planets can be a little unhinged, all right? Especially with communication. Mercury is all about communication. Now, 
there is potential for something here that could go a little bit sideways with this type of aspect and communication. Mercury is still in Scorpio. Remember that. So not only is there that intensity, but remember secrets revealed, revelations. So, hey, this includes maybe the way that you think about someone or a situation, circumstance, and you know, it slips. You say something, accidentally comes out, and you're just like, ooh, that was meant to stay in my head. Well, the secret is now out. So the other thing is, uh, it really is going to be a time where you may also hear something too, okay? Someone might say something to you where they don't, remember, emotions are heightened around this time, so they may not mean it, or it just comes off across where you're just like, what? That was surprising. That was a shock to the system. That's like, you know, it's Uranus, like lightning striking, right? So just bear that in mind. There, There is a day, this is a day to practice mindfulness. That's it, okay? Remember, as long as you are being in touch with your higher self, being your authentic self, you're going to be fine because you have nothing to hide all right it really is like that saturday night live skit with kristen wig that birthday party you know surprise birthday party she finds out about it it's there's like a million of these episodes where she just really really wants to tell that person okay and she's like Argh. and then she does and she like uh, runs through a wall that's kind of how like this could feel it really is something that is possibly for you libra nation it could have to do with finances or money because Mercury and Scorpio, your second house of salary, income, finances. You got Uranus and Taurus and your eighth house, shared resources, business partners, things like that. Okay, so just keep that in mind. All right, just work with these energies. All right, focus on your breakthrough, by the way. All right, remember Uranus's breakthroughs. Now, Mercury will try Neptune on October 31st. Absolutely amazing. It, see this like complete flip. It's just so amazing. Very magical. This is an incredibly magical day. I love this day for you. All right. A lot of compassion here, possibly with colleagues. All right. Something really nice with colleagues. There could be something here uh, that really boosts your self-confidence as well. But Mercury tried Neptune. Again, compassion. It's just magical. It's poetry in motion. It's Mercury, right? Great for world building. Great for writers. Great for artists. Um, even if you're not, it was just such a really magical time. Um, arts. Okay, the arts, dancing, film, music, all of that really heightened. This is in great water trine. We've got Mercury and Scorpio, Neptune, Pisces, and Mars and Cancer. And so what's happening here? When you see what's happening here, you see that it's activating your 10th house of career, your 6th house of work, and your 2nd house of income. So there could be something here really nice for you. All right? I actually love the merging of Mercury with its logic and its intellect, Neptune with its imagination, intuition. And it is Halloween. If you celebrate that, I mean, costumes could be off the charts around this time. Even you could have these, like, brilliant, like, oh, my goodness, how did you come up with that? mermaid werewolf costume like whatever it is like people could be talking about it for like weeks it could be really great and then lastly lastly libra uh the day after october 31st is obviously november 1st and we have a new moon in scorpio so really nice really nice money 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 remember that's your second house of money new beginnings, income, finances. We'll talk about that uh, in November. Let's get started. All right, let's see what's going on for you, right? Libra Nation for October 21st to the end of the month. Okay, Libra. All right, let's see what's going on. Libra, how y'all doing? Thanks so much for being here. Y'all look really great. I hope you enjoyed your birthday season uh, a lot of big changes happening for libras all right um i also do a traditional cult across spread it offers the best overview if we need to pull clarifiers we will we will libra you know i love y'all another thing just okay i'm gonna give you one more spoiler for november the beginning of november mars will try mercury oh my goodness so career and money like it's just okay so let's I'll, let's do the last two weeks of October. All right, let's see what's going on. Okay, yeah, big changes. Yep, big, big, big changes. You are actually really, really good. There is going to be something that Uranus is going to be really strongly activated for you. I want you to know that, okay? Uranus, again, in your eighth house, there is that depth there, and it is transformation. You're going to have it. You're going to have it. Let's get started. 
Uh, well, you got the Empress, so absolutely amazing. This is passion. This is love. This is sensuality. This is sexuality. This is uh, just uh, vibrating, super conscious level. I love this for you. A lot of comfort here. You see your uh, symbol, right, of Venus, your ruling planet in the stone-shaped heart. Really nice. A lot of abundance. Now, I'm going to show you something that's really, really crazy and showing that you can truly manifest what you want, okay? But first, the Empress, again, this is just a lot of comfort. There's something new happening in your world, all right? Let that grow. Let it grow. This is abundance, true abundance. Let it grow. It's it, the Empress card three. Okay. One, two equals new reality. It's also growth, advancement, um, all of that. Okay. Uh, maturation, all of that energy. Now, uh, the other thing, hi, you got the King of Pentacles and the heart of your spread. Mm, big. All right. So that money energy, you know, the Empress, when I say abundance, that can be money as well. Um, spend time in nature, by the way, with these two. Uh, he, that's going to really help king of pentacles. I mean, the richest king, and this is someone who is, oh, is he has ownership, he has ownership. He's a big provider. Okay. Very practical, big protector energy too, but rich and confident, confident. All right. You look at all that harvest, look at his hand over the pentacle owning his wealth. I love this. Okay. Really, really nice. Uh, king of pentacles, Taurus by the way. All right. So really nice because remember that's your eighth house finances. Uh, there's a shared resources. So really great, really great. Now what I'm going to show you here, you got the only two cards and this is rare, by the way, you got the only two cards in all the tarot where they hold that golden scepter. All right. Only two. Okay. And so anything they touch turns to gold. They create this abundance. They have that power. They have that confidence. Look at look at even her. Like I said, comfort. She's lounging in her chair. She's not like a, a queen. Like she's like she's comfortable. She's comfortable. Okay. So there's this birth to something new here. She's pregnant as well. So birth to something new, new reality that you can create. Enormous, enormous potential here. This is absolutely amazing. Uh, so I would be surprised if there is some movement activity with money, with finances, but also your physical reality. Remember, King, that's what pentacles are too. Your physical reality, there's activity there, right? Something building your confidence, something even coming into your material world, your physical world, assets as well. Now, you have the creative swords in your challenge area. Just there, there's, uh, listen, there's going to be, so remember I said some people maybe singers out with Myers and Cancer, right? It just all these energies, power tripping. There you go. Queen of Swords. Okay. So very, very interesting. Two messages coming up. One. Yeah. There may be someone within your orbit that it could be a boss. It could be someone with power, authority. It could be a parent. It could just be someone that has a sharp tongue that says some things that are ooh, like they don't hold back. Okay. Mean girl energy with the Queen of Swords in your challenge area. Um, so just be mindful of that. Remember, don't let anyone take your power. Uh, you, you're going to be fine. Okay. Uh, don't let anyone pull you into low energy frequency. Now, the other thing is also, I want you to be mindful as well. I mean, the queen of swords is Libra. All right. So it could also be you mm, having to like process some things a little bit more without being like impulsive maybe there's something that you really 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 want to say but it may be something that your intuition is saying like don't <laughs> okay just keep that in mind now you got the four of wands another absolutely amazing card uh, a lot of y'all thinking about partnerships a lot of y'all thinking about uh you know and that can be career when i say partnerships okay that can be career uh if you're not here for love relationships this is big card to celebration joy this is feeling unbound right they're outside the castle this is oh it feels so good uh it's also milestone energy it is you know getting proposed to getting married having a baby buying a home all of that all of that right so uh really nice i love this uh really just continue to move that direction like you're gonna you're gonna be absolutely fine you got the six of swords another card is just like Let's move forward. Let's move forward. Okay, so this card, it's six. It's harmonizing. Things are harmonizing for you. You're going to feel that, especially up here. It is a sword suit, right? So uh, really nice. It's almost even getting to a point where you were just like, okay, well, that happened. 
I did my best. And so I'm just going to, I got to move on. You know, like that's what this is. You see my finger on the turbulent water. It's almost like, look at the direction they're going, right? It's, there's absolutely no undulation in, in the sea, right? So going from chaos to calm, all right, up here again, uh, the way that you're seeing things just also, it's like letting your mind free a lot of protection here. Really great. Now you have the tower and your future. So yeah, there may be, remember with the Uranus aspects, there may be something that happens. This card is, you can see the lightning, uh, you know, Uranus is lightning. So lightning striking the uh, crown off the tower. Hey, uh, crown representing ego too, right? So there is something here that this is a card of like chaos, destruction, things happening out of nowhere. You're like, what's going on? But let me remind you, uh, A, never fear the tower card. Some people, when they see this, they're like, ah, but if you fear the tower card, you're already creating this low energy frequency for yourself. And then you start creating this like fear of your future. Like, just don't, don't. Okay. Secondly, another reason why not to, because the tower card, it doesn't happen to you. It happens for you. Okay. So something's clearing the decks. Something is clearing the decks here. Okay. Um, ducks. Did I say ducks or decks? Decks. Something's clearing the ducks, and it just seems like uh, they're, it's what comes after the tower, What, by the way, the star, right? So healing, wisdom, stars aligning for you. So there is something here where I would just be mindful, okay? It can be with career. Uh, this card is attributed to Mars. And remember, Mars is in Cantor, where Mars is just like, ah! And uh, yeah, so 10th house of career, fame, public recognition, honors achievement social status all of that all of that all right so again being mindful about what you say uh, with some of the aspects this week um just keep that in mind okay but it even could be you know there could even could be like for some of y'all um uh, maybe something like a boss suddenly leaves or something there's just something there that it's just unexpected uh, but just remember, and, and I'll even clarify that one for you. Yeah, see, you're going to be fine. You got the three cups. So interestingly, um, one of the energies I was picking up on is that it always seems like you want it, <laughs> the tower moment, because you've been going through these strong energies. You did have that full moon in Aries. You did have that eclipse in your sign. You do have, you know, south node in your sign. You did have that Kazivi. You ha I mean, there was so much happening for you, Libra. So I'm like, I think they actually look at what's happening here. I think that some of y'all uh, are going to like be like, yeah, this is like, phoenix rising from the ashes three cups another card of celebration all right so really great there's joy here there's this element of like we did it okay or we're gonna do it or we got this but celebration with other people it can be a family squad colleagues whatever it is celebrating this new harvest all right remember three that vibration of the empress here you can see the new crop right the golden wheat new crop here so again something new seems like there's something new happening and that tower moment was necessary and like i say libra all y'all are different you have different rising signs different birth charts it makes you different from every other libra in this world some of you may feel like a one out of ten some of y'all may be a four out of ten but a lot of y'all may actually just be like I, like i'm glad that happened now i can you know celebrate this new okay anyway let's get to your stuff libra what uh what what is going on y'all um what was I going to say? If you like this reading, it would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments. I, uh, yeah, tell me what's going on. And happy birthday, late Libras. Uh, y'all are amazing. Thanks so much for being here. I, y'all are amazing. Okay, so let's, let's do this. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, you're good. You're fine. You're, listen, you've got, yeah, okay. Let's, you want to see what, uh, you got the hermit? All right, so what did I say? Going deep. You get really going deep with all this depth, all this sea energy, all this water energy, but also Scorpio energy, Pluto energy. The fact that you do have Uranus and Taurus in your eighth house ruled by Scorpio. So there is that depth. Do it. Go deep. That light is inside you. Let it shine. All right, Libra Nation. And it really is connecting with, uh, you know, your intuition and it brings that wisdom, makes you wiser. I mean, you got the hermit, the wise man, right? The wizard. Uh, and then you got the four swords. 
amazing okay and your external factors area that retreat that stillness of mind that taking that time out like really not overworking uh things up here it's it's good it's balancing like uh, working your chakras all that energy okay chakra work spirituality meditation you even see i'm going to show you the three swords pointing down the you see where they're pointing right the heart chakra the throat chakra the crown chakra so really activating i mean this is this is great by the way libra card too amazing love it uh so have that stillness of mind that's going to be really nice for you i think a lot of y'all are going to be feeling that you got the ten of swords here too in a place in your staff where it's saying yeah no more i'm done with everything that's been causing all this you know uh, taking up headspace or things that are happening up here i mean it is the swords right so even if like there is you know was not seeing eye to eye with someone or felt betrayed by someone or you know if there were circumstances that you felt like were just really heavy it's just like you know what let me just move on okay remember what i said with the six of swords energy whatever happened happened you're just like okay well let me let's move forward Let, okay so same energy here with that ten of swords ten of swords ten is the end okay and you see the sun is coming out this is the card of like new dawn all right so you got this new energy new energy as well moving forward energy there you go one zero equals one new beginning so learn from everything that may have happened but don't let it like uh like hold you right don't let it uh be like a force that uh where you're not feeling empowered okay this is just saying that you never have to go through that cycle again as long as remember, everything's karma like as long as you learn from anything that happened and use it to your advantage and then judgment in your final outcome i mean you are having this spiritual awakening that's what this card is vibrating at this high frequency really doing that deep dive what uh do i want to bring into my life to make it even more meaningful like all of that okay really going within and uh really having that mo like that, like rising above like phoenix rising from the ashes like this is in a spiritual sense like hearing the call of the trumpet you see archangel gabriel you have an archangel in your final outcome i mean you're good you're good this is having that wake-up call an awakening really nice really seeing the big picture okay uh so yeah you're good you're i mean this i have to say uh just the fact that you got the empress with the king of pentacles already uh, uh, because they're next to each, uh, it's like they don't come up next to each other that often right they you know you can get one here one here like this is big this is really big um and then that three of cups clarifying the tower of judgment you got the four swords it's like great 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 love it love it uh it seems like there is also yeah it's just like putting things in order like you've got a lot to look forward to you've got a lot to look forward to and like a lot of like depth that it, you're going to be exploring i love this this is going to be a big week okay thanks so much libra y'all uh next week um oh we do uh november yeah we do november and i i already gave you some spoilers <laughs> all right we'll do it next week libra if you like this reading it would be great if you like uh subscribe leave comments tell me what is going on i love this and uh yeah and then we'll we'll talk next week all right thanks so much libra nation i'll see you next week bye bye